Good morning, everyone. It's Monday morning. I want to say I sure miss being here yesterday. I miss seeing all of your smiling faces. We don't know how long this is going to go on, but we're going to do our best to keep you updated, to communicate with you. And I want to say right now, it's amazing uh, to see what's happening in our church. Our staff, who's been, who have all been incredible, Lori, Justin, Seth, um, putting all these things together, be it the adults, the youth, the children. So we'll continue to do this. That's number one. So thank all of those who've helped out so far. I want to thank you for all the wonderful, encouraging notes that you sent to us. Believe me, that goes a long way. Uh, some more good news. From what I know, there's no one in our church right now who has had a problem with their health. If you know of someone, if there's something we can do to help you, if there's some way we can pray for you, support you, please let the church know. So with that said, um, I'm going to just have a little short time of just talking to you right now, just something God's put in my heart. You know, the Psalms in the Old Testament are a great, great treasure, have always been for God's people, especially for those who are suffering, for those who are lonely, for those who are perplexed. And the other day I was reading uh, Psalm 39, and God just put this on my heart. I just want to share with you right now. I'm going to read with King David writes in Psalm 39, verse 4 and 5. He says this, Lord, make me to know my end, and what is the extent of my days. Let me know how transient I am. Behold, you've made my days as hand breaths, and my lifetime as nothing in your sight. Surely every man at his best is a mere breath. David knew the shortness of life. He talks about a hand breath. That's your four fingers going across. He says that life at best is a mere breath. And so David humbly prays, Lord, make me know my end. Specifically, give me wisdom that I can look down and see the end of my life and how I'm going to use my years, how I'm going to use my time. In other words, my life is short. How can I make the best of it? Well, because life is short, it makes us think about things. And I want to talk right now two things that we all probably need to sort out. Those things in life which are not important and those things in life which are very important. The things in your life that are not important, in a word, idols. Idols, yes, idols. God needs to sort them out. The Apostle James, excuse me, the Apostle John in 1 John 5, 21, he says, Little children, guard yourself from idols. An idol is anything that is more important to you than God. John Calvin wrote this. The human mind is, so to speak, a perpetual forge of idols. An idol is anything you substitute for God. Idols can be as many as people on the planet. Idols can be money. Idols can be possession. Idols can be prestige. Idols can be Power. Idols can be pornography. Idols can be alcohol. Idols can be watching too much sport on TV. It's one of the things that I've seen in my own life. I miss watching sports. I've got to, is that the most important thing in my life? Of course not. So at this time right now, when we're all having to find how to fill up our time, idols often come in there and they promise you things. They promise you life which they never can fulfill on. So in this time of difficulty, we need to see what's most important. And time such as this brings us into focus. And one of the focuses that brings us in, what do we put our time, our energy into that really have no meaning? Not that you can't ever have downtime, but the the problem is that we fall into idolatry at times. 
So, on the other hand, we begin to sort out what's not important, and we begin to look at what is important. Psalm 39, verse 7, David wrote, wrote this, And now, Lord, for what do I wait? My hope is in you. This becomes a turning point for David. The main concern now is, how am I going to live my life? Life is measured not by how rich we are with material goods, but life is measured by values, things that will stand the test of time and that will last. Through, through faith, David now moves from hopelessness to hope and from paralysis to action. What's important to you? Hopefully, you're seeing some things that are jumping out your loved ones. How about your health as what we're going through is a health scare? How about your freedom as we're all being confined to our neighborhoods? All of a sudden, these things that are most important begin to bubble up to the surface. Let me close by saying this. This is found in the the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10. Jesus was at the home of Martha and Mary, friends of his. Martha and Mary were the sisters of Lazarus, who Jesus raises from the dead in John chapter 11. While he's there, Martha is running around doing all kind of household work that I'm sure needed to be done. In the meantime, Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus. Martha gets aggravated with her sister Mary, and she says something to Jesus. What are you going to do about this? And Jesus responds like this in Luke chapter 10, verse 41. But the Lord answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered about so many things, but only one thing is necessary, for Mary has chosen the good part which shall not be taken away from her. The most important. And what is that most important thing? Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus. The most important thing is your relationship with the Lord. Now, right now, some of you, this might be a, a time to jumpstart that relationship with the Lord. And a great place to do it, the number one place, is God's Word, the Bible. You have time on your hands right now. What a great time to begin to look at God's Word. And let me give you some practical things as we close right here. If you've never read through the New Testament yet, begin right there. And begin in the Gospel of Mark. Why do I say Mark? Well, Mark is the shortest gospel. Mark is a gospel that's full of action. Jesus doesn't have a lot of sermons that he preaches in it. He's going from one place to another. In my version, uh, New American Standard, the word it uses over and over again, I think over 40 times, is the word immediately. And immediately Jesus did that. Immediately Jesus did this. Begin by reading the Gospel of Mark, and as you do, take your time. Savor Jesus. I've been reading the Bible for 40 years now. The Gospels never get old. Jesus is never Tiresome to read about the same miracle over and over because of the greatness of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. So begin with the Gospel of Mark. So let me give you an example. Tomorrow, if you don't already have a plan, read Mark chapter 1. But here's the second part of that. Begin also by reading a psalm, one a day. There's 150 psalms. That'll take you, what, about five months? Begin with Psalm 1, read one psalm a day, one chapter of the New Testament a day. Now, if, I'm going to give you some help if you want to begin with the psalms. It's a little devotion that I use quite often. I use daily. It's Timothy Keller. It's called The Songs of Jesus, A Year of Devotion in the Psalms. I would highly recommend this. You can get it in hardback copy or you can get it on a Kindle copy. So I close by saying this. I love you. I miss you. If there's anything we can do for you, please let us know. Um, prayer requests, let us know. Keep safe. Do the things you're supposed to do. 
and especially the things that our Lord has called us to do. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. And God's wonderful people said,